Hi everyone. We're talking about hairs and fibers in our discussion boards. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about hairs and fibers that you might not know or that you may have skimmed over and you weren't quite clear on. So we'll start with DNA on hair. There is DNA in the root of a hair. If you're able to get enough of the root, it is possible to get DNA on that hair. Now if there's not a root on the hair, it is possible to get what they call mDNA, mitochondrial DNA. That's DNA that has been passed down from the mother, only from the mother. And why this is important is, for example, if you had a body discovered and you wanted to identify it, you would be able to identify using mitochondrial DNA. You could take a sample from the mother, the grandmother, the sister, one of the females in the family and compare it to the deceased and be able to get a match to know whether or not this person was related or not. So that's mDNA. The second thing about um, hair fiber, or hair, and we'll talk about fibers in a minute, uh, the other thing about hair is it may not give you an exact match to a person, but it gives the investigator a place to look. If you have a, uh, a victim and they have a hair on them, an analysis can tell you what color the hair is, if there are dyes in the hair, if it was ripped out, if it was clipped, um, whether it uh, belongs to a white person, whether it belongs to an African American person, whether it's a pubic hair, whether it's a head hair, whether it um, came from another part of the body, all these things can be determined through the hair analysis. And this is important because it would give the investigator a place to start. If you had a victim and an unknown suspect, through that hair, if they had a, an unknown hair on them, the, the investigation could turn towards whatever the evidence finds. For example, they find that hair and they say, this is a dyed hair from a white person and uh, the dye is blue or red or blonde. It would give you a little bit of uh, an advantage in looking for your suspect. Now, if you have a suspect that you think uh, might fit and now the hair matches to them, well, then you could do an exact comparison. But it does give you a starting point. The same is with fiber. When you find a fiber, it may not, if you don't have a known to compare it to, you could still have that fiber give you some information about who you're looking for. If a body's dumped on the side of the road, and it has a red fiber on it that you collect and they're able to tell you that this is a fiber normally associated with motor vehicle interiors. Maybe they're even able to narrow it down to a manufacturer of uh, Ford or Dodge or something like that. Now when you're looking for your suspect, maybe they drive a Dodge with red interior. It will give you that um, characteristic that will allow you to narrow your investigation, possibly. Now, the most important thing about hair and fiber evidence is the collection. 90% of that hair or fiber evidence will be gone in eight hours because they're so easily disturbed. So the wind, anything, a rubbing against something is going to make that evidence disappear. So it's very important that you collect it when you see it. If you see a fiber or a hair on your evidence on a body, by the time you go and get your envelope and come back, that hair will be gone. You have to collect it when you, when you see it. You still need to document it, you still need to photograph it, but you need to collect it because if you wait and say, well, I'm going to do this room in, in our specific order and I'll get to that in an hour when we, when we get to that portion, that hair is going to be gone, that fiber will be gone. And now you can say, well, I know I saw one, but it's not here now. It's not going to work. You have to collect it. Very, very important. And you can collect it a couple ways. You could use tweezers. You could um, use a vacuum with, this would be more for, a, say, a car seat or something like that that you wanted to check for hair fibers. But you could use a vacuum that has a filter in it. The problem with that is it's going to collect everything, dust, particles, old food. And so some labs might not enjoy that because it does have all the other stuff in it. But you could also use sticky tape 
uh, the adhesive of, say, a post-it note. And you could st stick that on your area and push down, and hopefully you'll get some hairs of fibers stuck to that, and that would be well. Once you have your hairs and fibers, you would put them in what they call a, a druggist fold of a paper. You fold that up, not an envelope, because they could sneak, sneak out the sides, the little holes on the side of the envelope, but you would put that in there um, to secure your sample. I just wanted to give you uh, uh, those two examples of hair and fiber uh, and some of the different things. Same things keep popping up in the discussion boards, uh, so I figured I would address it to everyone. If you have questions, if you anything, send me an email, send it in the discussion board. I'll be more than happy to make a video or, or send something back to you. Okay, I'll see you on the discussion boards uh, and talk to you soon. Bye.